Hi friends, welcome to Kraku's online classes. I'm Saili Kale. I'm one of the co-founders of Kraku and an alumna of IIM Ahmedabad. In today's class, we'll be taking a closer look at time, speed, and distance. Time, speed, and distance is one of those fundamental topics that students should get absolutely correct, like a hundred percent accuracy, and should solve the questions with relatively less time. Uh, this, uh, these questions are general have become more important in recent CAD, uh, given its extra emphasis on arithmetic. Uh, also, it is like a fundamental topic that you should know because many other topics derive uh, on the basis of this topic. So, questions on clocks, on circular tracks, all of the, all of these questions basically reference the basic ideas mentioned in time, speed, and distance. So, you should expect at least one to two questions from this topic. And given that it is a fundamental topic, it is extremely important to have a very good foundation in this topic. So, let's get started. Let's begin by reviewing the basic formula that one needs to know to answer questions from time, speed and distance. The basic formula is based that speed is equal to distance by time. <coughs> you can rewrite this as time is equal to distance by speed or distance is equal to time into speed. This is these this one formula is essentially all that you need to remember to answer all questions from time, speed, and distance. Uh, knowing uh, specific formulas, etc., might save a tiny amount of uh, time as such. But essentially, if you know this formula, you would be able to solve all kinds of questions from this uh, from this particular uh, uh, subject. Uh, the important thing to remember here is that uh, if you are very comfortable understanding what exactly is the time taken, what exactly is the distance covered, how you can express this into this basic simple formula, you can essentially uh, translate the information given in any question into this formula and then solve the questions using this basic formula. Uh, we kind of don't encourage people to remember tricks and tips in uh, tricks or shortcuts in this particular uh, uh, subject because we feel that this is a very simple subject if you understand it in depth. What sometimes students do is they remember okay in this case this is how you should solve but essentially what you should remember the only thing you should remember from this topic is this formula and you should just remember that you have to translate whatever information is given in the question to a uh, equation which uses this formula. If you are able to do that for all questions you should be able to solve all questions from this topic. So now that we know the basic uh, foundation on which this topic is based, let's take a look at the uh, this of average speed. So essentially average speed is total distance divided by the total time taken. There are many uh, sub formulas on this. So when example, when the distance is constant, when distance is constant, the average speed is the harmonic mean of the two speeds. When the time is constant, the average speed is the arithmetic mean of the two speeds. <clears throat> but we discourage this view of how to remember, uh, how to calculate average speed. Essentially, we feel that uh, no question that will come in actual CAT will be that easy where you just have to take a harmonic mean or just an arithmetic mean. It will, need, uh, it will require you to apply uh, some amount of constraints, some amount of conditions and uh, like write down an equation. And whenever that is required, the only real uh, thing that you need to remember is that speed is equal to distance by time. So average speed is equal to total distance by total time. Whenever you see any kind of question asking for average speed, just use this basic formula that we have shown above. Do not try to calculate on the basis of harmonic mean and on the basis of arithmetic mean. It is pointless. The time you will save is not worth the uh, risk of losing marks on by making an error as such. So when, uh, for example, if you are said that uh, uh, somebody covers a distance of 10 kilometer at 50 kmph and uh, 10 kilometer at 40 kmph, instead of taking the average uh, harmonic mean of 40 and 50, you can just say that average speed is equal to the total distance covered. So in this case, this is 10 plus 10, that is 20 kmph or uh, 20 kilometers divided by the total time taken. So the time taken in the first case would be 10 by 50 and in the second part would be 10 by 40. So this is 20 by 0.2 plus 0.25. This is 
ट्वेंटी बाई पॉइंट फोर फाइव और दिस इज इक्वल टू फोर्टी फोर पॉइंट Now you could have arrived at the same thing by saying that let's take the harmonic mean of forty and fifty, but it does not make sense for the simple reason that the more questions you solve by using the basic concept of time, speed, and distance, the better you will be get at uh, translating the information given in the question in terms of the equation of time, speed, and distance. Once you get more comfortable in understanding what is asked, what is given, and translating into that basic equation, the better you would get at this topic. so i'd urge all of you to continue to just use the basic equation of time speed and distance at all times when uh, in the case of uh, calculating average speed when time is constant when time is constant and suppose he travels 1 hour at 50 kmph and 1 hour at 40 kmph in this case the average speed all uh, i'll write it up average speed would be uh, is suppose uh, this is 1 into 50 plus 1 into 40 divided by 1 plus 1 that is 2 hours so this is uh, 90 by 2 that is 45 kmph so as we saw this actually follows the rules of finding harmonic mean and arithmetic mean but it is easier to remember the basic formula than to remember which is which or to make a uh, make an error based on by just remembering what uh, is the particular case there might be specific cases where neither the uh, distance is constant nor the time is constant in that case you will have to use this equation anyway so uh, i would just urge you that whenever you have a chance always calculate your time speed distance uh, answers by using this basic formula that speed is equal to distance by time that is the only formula that you should remember from this topic now let's go on to the uh, a question based on average speed So it is given that Arjun travels from Mumbai to Pune at 50 kmph and back from Pune to Mumbai at 100 kmph. What is his average speed for the entire journey? So now it's given that he travels one distance one way and the same distance the other way. So uh, when you are given two cities, Mumbai to Pune, so this is Mumbai. See, this is Mumbai and this is Pune. So essentially, what is the case is here is that. Uh, the distance traveled by him on both legs of the journey are equal so this is essentially constant distance so suppose this uh, distance is d now total distance would be since he is doing uh, this distance wise it would be 2d in this case the time taken on the first part would be d by uh, capital d by 50 and in the second part would be capital d by 100 so the average speed is total distance total distance by total time that is 2 times d divided by d by 50 plus d by 100 so this is essentially uh, we ca cancel d or from the numerator and denominator we get 2 divided by 2 by 100 plus 1 by 100 so this is essentially 200 by 3 that is 66.66 kilometers per hour so we get the answer as option b so we see that the answer for this question was not the arithmetic mean but rather the harmonic mean of 50 and 100 uh, in this case uh, we just calculated uh, we assumed some uh, a variable for d and given a variable for d we could calculate the time taken in uh, terms of d and then by uh, dividing the total distance by total time we could find the average speed now let's take a look at another question based on average speed Bilal travels at 40 kmph for some time and then travels at 60 kmph for the same time. So clearly, when you are given same time, this is a question on constant time. <coughs> What is his average speed for the entire journey? So let this time, that this the constant time be t. So in the first leg, he uh, travels uh, t at uh, 60 k, uh, 40 kmph. So distance would be d1 would be. 40 into t uh, in the second leg he travels at 60 kmph so d2 is 60 into t so the average speed would be average speed is total distance divided by total time that is 40t plus 60t and he spends uh, two journeys of t each so this will be 2t so this is 100t by 2t this is 50 kmph 
So as we saw, this is equal to the arithmetic mean of those two values because the time is constant. But as I said, we should always try to solve this using the basic relation that average speed is total distance by total time. Here you would make very few mistakes. This question as it is would not come in CAT. There would be a lot of conditions, there would be a lot of complications involved. So always make sure that you remember that average speed is total distance by total time. Now that you know this concept, let's go on to solving actual time speed and distance questions where average speed is not asked. We have now asked to calculate either the distance or the speed or time. In such cases, you can broadly uh, separate these questions into two types. One is the question on constant distance and the second type is a question on constant time. Essentially, on answering time speed and distance questions boils down to identifying whether the question is based on the concept of constant distance or it is based on the concept of constant time. Once you identify what, uh, whether it is constant distance or whether it is constant time, then it is just basically applying the simple formula that time is equal to distance by speed and uh, equating those different parts to uh, get the answer. In case it is constant distance, what you have to do is basically say that this distance is d, then you have to say that distance is equal to s1 into t1, which is equal to s2 into t2. So essentially, when you realize that the question is based on constant distance, then you have to say that distance in first case is this, distance in second case is this. Since the distance is same, we can equate these two subparts to get the actual distance value. Once you have this actual distance value, we can find out what the speed is, what the time is. Okay. So how do you identify whether the question is based on constant distance? If there is, a, if it is given that somebody travels the distance between two cities uh, or both like uh, two people travel the distance between two cities or move uh, uh, or uh, travel at the, uh, along a particular this, then in this case the time uh, distance traveled would be constant because the, the distance between two cities is the fixed uh, this. So if, there is, if you say that uh, two people start at different times and reach another point, uh, start at different times from point A and reach point B at the same time, then they have traveled this uh, constant distance. Another case is when there are races with uh, where uh, people run to completion. When people run to completion, then uh, there is a, uh, uh, each person has run the same distance as such. So suppose it's a 100 meter race and A completes it in 10 seconds and B completes it in 11 seconds. Here, the distance run by both of them is the same. Just the time taken is different. Uh, another uh, case of constant distance is clocks. Now clocks run along the same or uh, this. The minute hand in an, uh, uh, in when it does one rotation covers the same distance as the hour hand when it does one rotation. This is the time taken by them to do this is different. So all you have to figure out is that are these two things that two entities whose speeds and distances you are comparing are these covering the same distance or not. When they are covering the same distance, write the speed equation of one, write the equation for the other, equate the two for distance value and then you get a linear equation that you can solve. Now let's take an example based on the concept of constant distance. A man leaves his home and walks at a speed of 12 kilometers per hour, reaching the railway station 10 minutes after the train had departed. This is a CAT 2017 question from the first shift. If instead he had walked at a speed of 15 kilometers per hour, he would have reached the station 10 minutes before the train's departure. The distance in kilometer from his house to the railway station is. Now if you can see, he leaves the same point that is his home and reaches the same point that is the train station. So in this case, uh, in either of these hypothetical situations, the distance traveled by him is constant. Now if we say the distance traveled by him is constant, let this distance be d. So in the first case, d is equal to, he uh, let the d is the distance say and uh, let t be the time taken when he travels at, uh, t is time when he travels at uh, when speed is uh, 12 kmph. So in this case, uh, d is equal to t into 12 kmph. Now the second uh, this is that if he had traveled uh, uh, he reaches 10 minutes late. If he had travelled at 15 kmph, he would have uh, reached 10 minutes before the ten, uh, train's departure. So essentially, if he had travelled at 15 kilometers per hour, he would have arrived 20 minutes before the time he arrived when he travelled at 12 uh, kilometers per hour. 
so essentially the time taken in the second case time taken in the second case is t minus 20 minutes or uh, since we are considering t is in hours uh, this can be written as t minus one third r so in this case d is equal to t minus one third into 15 kmph it is extremely important that we keep a uh, track of the uh, units that we are considering here all the speeds are given in kilometers per hour the time is given in minutes so we have to first convert this time that is in minutes to hours so we say that the distance is kilometers t time is uh, time in hours speed is 12 kilometers per hour so distance is equal to t time in hours into 12 kilometers per hour so d will be in kilometers now when you are given 20 minutes you have to convert it into hours so in the second case we get t minus 1 by 3 hours so again we get the equation for distance as d is equal to 1 by t minus 1 by 3 into 15 kmph now d is constant so we can uh, equate these two equations so we get 12 t is equal to 15 times t minus 1 by 3 that is equal to 15 t minus 50 uh, minus 5 so 3 t is equal to 5 or t is equal to 5 by 3 hours so if t is equal to 5 by 3 hours then distance is d is equal to 5 by 3 hours into 12 kmph this is equal to 20 kilometers therefore the distance between his home and the train station is 20 kilometers so you have to put in the input the answer as 20 kilometers so as you can see that once we realize that this question is on uh, constant distance all we had to do is we had to find out uh, the equation of time uh, speed into time in the first case the equation for speed into time in the second case as it is constant distance we equate these two equations and then we get the answer required uh, now let's take a look at the other type of question asked from this uh, uh, subtopic that is on constant time so essentially in this case uh, the two entities whose speed or time we are considering uh, travel for different distances but they travel at this for the same period of time when you get the same period of time you basically get t is equal to distance traveled by the first d1 by s1 is equal to d2 by s2 therefore in this case you can equate these two things and get the value for the uh, when you say that the time is constant we can just say d1 by s1 is equal to d2 by s2 on solving we can get the answer required so basically whenever you realize that the time traveled by these two entities is same just use this basic fundamental to calculate the distance and the speed of the entities when can you say that the time is constant when uh, you have races with head start so suppose a starts 10 meters behind b and then both start at the same time and reach at the uh, reach the end line at the same time in this case though a ran 10 meters extra than b a and b ran for the same time so essentially in this case they run for constant time or if you say that at the finish line they start with the same time but at the finish line a is 10 meters ahead of b so a finishes 10 meters ahead of b means that when they run for the same time a finishes the race that is x meter race and b finishes x minus 10 meters in the same period of time so whenever you have a uh, head start or finishes given in meters you can assume that the uh, runners are running for the constant time again another way we can say that uh, uh, when two people start from two ends or two cities and meet at some point in the middle then these two have uh, uh, essentially uh, traveled for the same time so you then you would consider that uh, the time is constant use this concept of constant time uh, calculate their distance by speed ratios equate them and then you will get the required answer another thing is that in circular races often you have this constant that uh, when he completes one lap he uh, this person completes half a lap or something like that essentially in all of these cases the time is constant so when two people running on a circular race meet they have been running at for the same period of time because they are running at different speeds they would have covered different distances that is different number of laps around the circular race but they would have traveled for the same time so all in all of these cases you have to uh, solve the question assuming that the time required is constant now that you understood this concept let's take a look at a question based on constant time so the question is 
In a 10 km race, A, B and C, each running at uniform speed, get the gold, silver and bronze medals respectively. If A beats B by 1 km and B beats C by 1 km, then by how many meters does A beat C? Okay, so we now know that uh, a, B, a beats B by 1 km. Now what does this mean? This means that when A completes 10 km, B completes 10 minus 1 that is 9 km. This means that A and B have been running for the same period of time and in the period of time that A took to complete 10 km, in that same period of time B completes 9 km. Therefore, this is a question on constant time. So, let us say this constant time is T. In this case, A completes uh, that is DA, uh, 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 this uh, DA distance in SA speed that is speed of A, this is equal to DB that is distance completed by B and SB is the speed of B. Now, DA is 10 kilometers and speed of A we do not know and uh, DB is essentially 9 kilometers, 10 minus 1, so 9 kilometers and speed of B we do not know. But now we know the ratio of SA by SB. This is equal to 10 by 9. Therefore, uh, the ratios of speeds of A and B is 10 is to 9. Now, in another, uh, this we know that, say this is T1. We also know that B beats C by 1 kilometer. Now, what does this mean? This means for when the, uh, both have been running for T2 time, uh, after B re reaches the finish line of the 10 kilometer race, he sees that C has completed only 9 kilometers. So, the time taken uh, for B to complete 10 kilometers is the same time that C takes to complete 9 kilometers. So, in this case, DB by SB is equal to DC by SC that is 10 kilometers by SB is equal to 9 kilometers by SC. This is equal to so SB by SC is equal to 10 by 9. Now, we are asked that how many meters does A beat C. Now, for A to beat C, to calculate that uh, this, we have to calculate how many meters does C complete when A completes 10 kilometers. That is the difference or distance that A beats C by. So, we are saying that if uh, uh, this is essentially in T1 time, uh, A covers 10 kilometers at the rate SA. And we want to find DC, uh, DC dash, that is the time uh, distance covered by C in the time that uh, it takes A to cover 10 kilometers. So, DC dash by SC. Now, essentially we need uh, to calculate DC dash, we need SC by SA into 10 kilometers. So, SC by SA, you have SA by SB and you have SB by SC. So, you can say that SA by SB into SB by SC. So, you cancel the numerator and denominator. So, this is equal to 10 by 9 into 10 by 9 that is equal to 100 by 81. So, SA by SC is 81 by 100. Putting this value over here, we get DC dash is equal to 81 by 100 times 10k. So, this is equal to 8.1 kilometer. So, the time it takes A to complete 10 kilometers, in the same time C completes 8.1 kilometers. So, A will beat C by uh, 10k minus 8.1k that is 1.9k as in this case they have asked in meters, this is 1900 meters. So, the answer is 1900 meters. So, essentially what we have done here is we have first assumed that uh, A and B run for the constant time, found the relationship between their speeds. Then we say A and uh, B and C run for constant time, found a relationship between their, C, uh, uh, their speeds uh, through the indirect proportion uh, uh, this that we have S is, uh, S, uh, ratio of S and SA and SB and we have ratio of SB and SC. From this we inferred the ratio of SA and SC. Once you have the ratios of their uh, speeds, we can infer how much distance they would have run in the same time. Once we have that, we can calculate the distance by which A beats C. So, this is how we calculate uh, when uh, we are asked a question based on the concept of constant time. So, now that you understood this, let us take a look at a slightly harder problems on this uh, topic, from this topic. 
So let's consider this question. Shruti and Krishna left Delhi for Noida at the same time. While Shruti was driving her car, Krishna, an environmentalist by profession, was traveling on his bicycle. Having reached Noida, Shruti turned back and met Krishna an hour after they started. Krishna continued his journey to Noida after the meeting, while Shruti turned back and also headed for Noida. Having reached Noida, Shruti again turned back and met Krishna 30 minutes after their first meeting. The time taken by Krishna to cover the distance between Delhi and Noida is, and you have the options given. Now, now let's first draw this out. Because there, this involves two people. Neither is this the constant time, nor is it is, uh, it is constant distance as it is. Uh, we can see that Shruti is traveling a lot more distance than Krishna. Also, we don't have like any absolute value of time, though they are traveling for constant time in subparts as such. So, suppose this is Delhi, this is Noida. So, let's consider two subparts. The first leg is when uh, Shruti uh, reaches Noida, turns, this is the first meeting. In the first meeting, uh, Shruti has traveled to Noida, turned back and met Krishna at say spot, uh, this is T1 at 1 hour. In this time, Krishna has traveled x distance and uh, the overall let, let the distance between Delhi and Noida be d. So, in the first meeting, Shruti, uh, let's say, let's draw this out as a table. So, in the first meeting, Shruti and Krishna, when this guy travel in the first hour, Shruti travels a distance of D that is from Delhi to Noida plus she travels this distance back. So, D minus X. In this time, uh, Krishna basically travels just the distance X. Uh, and in the next half hour, since this is just half hour, Krishna will travel X by 2 distance. So, he will be somewhere over here. This is at T2 equal to 1.5 hours. So, this distance will be x by 2 because this is half an hour more. So, given that Krishna is traveling by constant speed, if he traveled x in 1 hour, in the next half hour he will travel x by 2. In this same time, uh, Shruti has gone back. So, she has done, so essentially in this half hour, she has done d minus x again plus she has done this d minus uh, 3x uh, uh, 3 by 2. So, essentially it is d minus x plus d minus 3x by 2. So, now you have uh, the first, in the first case you have since there, uh, uh, since the time is constant, we can say that uh, we can calculate t is equal to uh, d, d uh, of Shruti by s of Shruti that is dk by s of uh, uh, Krishna that is speed of Krishna. So, essentially doing that we can say that speed of Shruti by speed of Krishna is essentially distance travelled by Shruti divided by distance travelled by Krishna. So, in this case, this is 2d minus x. This divided by x is the distance travelled by Krishna. So, ss by sk is 2d minus x divided by x. In the next half hour, we get t is equal to ds by ss is equal to dk by sk. So, in this case, ss is by sk is equal to, uh, in this case she has traveled uh, uh, 2d minus 5x by 2, that is uh, 2d minus 2.5x divided by x by 2. So, we see that uh, in this half hour she has traveled this much distance. So, essentially these two uh, ratios are exactly the same. So, you can say that 2d minus x by x is equal to 2d minus 2.5 x by x by 2. So, uh, since these ratios are same, so if we take the half from the denominator to the numerator, we will get denominator as x in both cases and then we can equate the numerators. So, we can say that 2d minus x is equal to 2 times 2d minus 2.5 x. This is 2 is come from the denominator over here. So, 2d minus x is equal to 4d minus 5x or 2d is equal to 4x or d is equal to 2x essentially. So, now we have gotten the distance to be 2 times the uh, x as, as such. So, in 1 hour Krishna completes x. So, to cover 2x he will take 2 hours. So, the time taken by Krishna to cover the distance between Delhi and Noida is 
2 hours. So, we got the op answer as option A. So, as you could see that in this case is uh, we had to split it up into two legs and in both those legs we see that the time taken by both of them was constant. Once we got that we could write the equation for the ratio of their speeds. Once we had the ratio of their speeds in both cases we could then equate them to get the answer. So, this is how you answer questions that are slightly complicated. Always try to remember that all you have to basically do is see in what phases is the time taken constant and uh, in what phases there is the distance constant. Once you get that in this particular this, we can say that the time taken is uh, this much and both of these travel for the same time, we can then basically use our concept of constant time to solve the question. On the other hand, if you get the funda that they are traveling the same distance, you just have to identify in what part they are traveling the same distance, create the equations, equate them to get the answer. Now, let us take a look at another question based on this. So, let us take a look at this question. A train approaches a tunnel AB. Inside the tunnel is a cat located at a point that is 3 eighth of the distance of AB measured from entrance A. When the train whistles, the cat runs. If the cat moves to the entrance of tunnel A, the train catches the cat exactly at the entrance. If the cat moves to the exit B, the train catches the cat at exactly the exit. What is the ratio of the speed of the train and the cat? Now, if you let us draw this out first. So, we have a tunnel A, B as such. Now, it has been given that the cat is located at a point 3 at the, the distance of A, B measured from entrance A. So, the cat is somewhere over here, say the cat and this distance is 3 by 8, this distance is 5 by 8. Let us say that the length of the tunnel A, B is x meters. Therefore, this is 3 by 8 x and this is 5 by 8 x. Now, the train whistles uh, uh, and the cat runs. So, it says that the train catches the cat at the entrance. So, A is the entrance and the train is over here and B is the exit of the tunnel. Uh, so, if we say this is the entrance, let this distance be Y. So, the train is Y uh, meters away from the entrance of the tunnel. So, we have been given that if the cat runs towards A, then uh, in the time it takes for her to cover 3 by 8 X, the train covers Y distance. So, essentially this is a case of constant time. In the same time as it takes the cat to cover 3 by 8 X, uh, train covers Y uh, meters. So, by using the con uh, fundament funda of constant time, let us say this time is T1, in the time it takes for the cat to cover 3 by 8 X, so in this case 3 by 8 times X divided by SC that is the speed of cat, this is equal to Y divided by ST that is the speed of train. So, in this time, uh, this is the time it takes for the cat to cover this distance and the train to cover this distance. So, we can say that ST that is speed of train divided by SC is equal to Y by 3 by 8 times X that is 8Y by 3X. Now, we have been given the second case. If she had run to B, then the train would have caught her at the exit. So, what does this mean? That let this time be T2. In this time, the uh, cat covers 5 by 8 times x divided by sc and the train covers, so it covers the entire distance x plus y. So, x plus y divided by st. So, in this case, we get st by sc is equal to uh, x plus y, <coughs> x plus y divided by 5 by 8 times x. So, we can say this is equal to 8x plus 8y divided by 5x. Now, we have to find out the ratio that is st to sc that is the speed of the train to the speed of cat. Suppose this required ratio is a say this is equal to st by sc. So, this is equal to 8y by 3x. So, we have a uh, part of it over here in this equation. We have 8y by 5x. So, what is 8y by 5x? 8y by 5x is essentially uh, 8y by 5x is uh, 3 by 5 times 8y by 3x. If you see 3, 3 will cancel, you get 8y by 5, 5x. So, this is essentially 3 by 5 times this ratio is a. So, 8y by 5x is 3 by 5 times a. So, substituting this value over here, we get st by sc that is sc by st is equal to a is equal to 8x by 5x plus 
थ्री बाई फाइव टाइम्स थ्री ए बाई फाइव और राधर टू ए बाई फाइव इज इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट सिक्स एट एक्स बाई फाइव एक्स यू गेट एक्स एक्स कैंसल दिस इज इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट सिक्स सो टू ए बाई फाइव इज इक्वल टू वन पॉइंट सिक्स और ए इज इक्वल टू फोर दे फोर द रेशियो एस टी टू एस सी इज इक्वल टू फोर सो द रेशियो ऑफ द स्पीड ऑफ द ट्रेन एंड टू द स्पीड ऑफ कैट इज फोर इज टू वन सो दिस इज हाउ वी कैलकुलेटेड द रेशियो ऑफ द स्पीड ऑफ द ट्रेन टू द स्पीड ऑफ द कैट we basically calculated the ratio in the first case assuming constant time we got the ratio in the second case assuming constant time we took a value for a sub part of this that is we found that 8y by 3x is a so 8y by 5x is 3 by 5 times a so this is 1.6 plus 3 by 5 times a and a is equal to 1.6 plus 3 by 5 times a or rather 2a is equal to 1 2a by 5 is 1.6 or a is equal to 4 so this is how we solved this particular question in this question what were, it was important to identify that this question was based on the concept of constant time once you recognize that uh, uh, the meaning of the words that uh, moves to the entrance and the train catches it exactly at the entrance this basically means that both the train and the cat have traveled for the same time or when it moves to the exit it catches it exactly at the exit this means that both the cat and the train in, even in this case have moved for the same time so once you figure out whether it is constant time or constant distance you can then substitute the values uh, create the equations that are needed and then find the answer that is required so this is how we answer questions based on time speed and distance now i would urge you to go and answer every single question that is given in the classroom test after you have done that go through the related videos answer the uh, see the related videos answer the concept test associated with the related videos and once you are done with that you uh, you would be thorough with all the fundamentals required for answering questions from time speed and distance this is an extremely crucial topic because these kind of questions you should not miss in cat so please go and let's hit this one out of the park let's do all of the things that are mentioned in the checklist thank you for tuning in